Am I responsible for others' pain? <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> Did you cause it? <laughs> if you caused it, then you're responsible for it. If you didn't cause it, then you're not responsible for it. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that they think you caused it. It means from God's perspective whether you caused it. Yeah. So the real determination of whether you are responsible for somebody else's pain is whether God or God's laws determine that you are responsible for their pain. Yeah. So, for example, many parents claim that a child, their own child, is responsible for the parent's pain. Mm -hmm. That's not true. The parent's responsible for the child's pain from God's mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's true. Mm -hmm. So quite often we have a distorted viewpoint of who's responsible. So what we need to say in, as a correct answer to this question is, from God's perspective, if you caused the pain in that person by taking an unloving action which resulted in pain for that person, then you are responsible for the pain of that person. Yeah. Even if you caused no pain in the person because they were at one with God, but you took an action that was unloving towards that person, you are still responsible for what they would have felt. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right? So even if they felt no pain, you are still responsible for what the unloving action itself was. Yeah. So you become responsible for the unloving action as determined by God and God's laws, not by your own laws or your own mind or your own ideals or your own beliefs. Yeah. So this is where a lot of religious people get out of harmony with love very quickly. They go, oh, the Bible says to me that I'm allowed to pick up a sword and stab somebody with it if they are of a different religion than me. Mm -hmm. right? The Bible does and the Koran both say such a thing is possible and suggest such a thing is possible. Of course, my words in the Bible say that that's not possible. Yeah. But then there's other things in the Bible that suggest that is possible, mm -hmm. that it's okay to go to war, for example. You know, there's other words in the Bible that suggest that. Now, if I take up arms and go to war, as a result, and the justification I use is the Bible said it, that I could, or the Koran said I could, then I'm not following God's beliefs anymore. I'm following my own. Yeah. Right? God's beliefs are it's never justifiable for you to harm another person, mm -hmm. never justifiable for you to take their will away from them. It's never justifiable for you to murder them. It's never justifiable for you to kill them for any reason, even if they've harmed you. Right? That's God's law. And every time you justify that, right, mm -hmm. you're basically saying to God, no, none of that applies. Yeah. And as soon as you say that to God, you've basically broken a heap of laws <laughs> in that process and you're going to experience some pain as a result of those, mm -hmm. the breaking of those laws. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we understand this, this important point with regard to this question. Yeah. So the question, am I responsible for others' pain, is directly dependent upon this who, who, who actually resolves whether you've caused pain or not. Mm -hmm. And it's God and God's laws that determine that, not yours. Yeah. Yep. So from God's perspective, if you have caused or wanted to cause or thought of causing another person pain, you have broken one of God's loving laws and as a result you will become responsible for what happens. And you're responsible even for the use of your will in that way, regardless of... Correct. Yep. Whether, regardless of whether it actually happened or not, yeah. in fact. Yeah. So you can even think of doing something to, and you've already sinned from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. You've already broken the law of love from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. That's how fine it is. Right? And this is why I said, in, and that is recorded in the Bible, that if you even look at a woman as to commit adultery with her, you've already committed adultery with her. You've yeah. already done it. Yeah. All right? You've already done, every time you look at somebody and you feel like you want to murder them, you've already murdered them. From God's perspective, there is a desire in your soul to murder that person and the law kicks in the gear. Mm -hmm. the, the law says you're now responsible for any pain that person feels. Uh, that's a pretty fine law. It is. Because uh, the person's going to feel some pain from your, coming from your soul towards them going, I want to murder you. Mm. There's a feeling coming out of your soul and, and it could potentially enter them Saying to, you, saying to them, I want to kill you, I want to murder you, I want to restrict your will. And, and that, if, if that feeling enters them, you are responsible for their pain. Mm. You are. Right? But there is this whole other side of the discussion, which is people who claim that you're responsible for their pain when you're not responsible for their pain at all. Yeah. 
And often I see parents claiming that their own children are responsible for the parents' pain, and that's not the case at all. Yeah. The parents are directly responsible for their parents' own pain, and the children are just reflecting the painful condition the parents are in, yeah. in most cases. And when I'm talking about children here, I'm talking about young children. Yeah. So, so whenever that parent blames the child and says, you've caused me pain, the parent's way out of line and has caused two pains. <laughs> They've lied, yep. which is a pain in itself, right, caused to the child. And then they've also blamed the child for something the parent did, which is another pain. Mm -hmm. So there's a doubling up of pain on the parent from the parent side from God's perspective. Mm. So this aspect of pain needs to be comparatively considered. And we need to understand that a lot of times we think other people have done us pain or wrong when really all they've done is not meet any of our addictions. <laughs> and so we need to, God doesn't consider any of those pains as pain. Yeah. Every time someone doesn't meet your addictions, that's your pain, not yeah. theirs. Well, they're, they're exposing. Meant not, yeah, they're the... meant to not you know, follow your addiction or yeah. meet your addictions. Yeah. In fact, if they meet your addictions from God's perspective, they've caused you pain. Mm -hmm. The opposite to what you believe many yeah. times. Yeah. So this is a problem with codependent relationships. You've got one person in the relationship giving emotions to the other that are addictive. The other person receives them. Now that person who's given to that person has harmed the person, even mm -hmm. though the person wanted mm -hmm. that emotion or that feeling. That per the other person has harmed them. And the other person having a demand on the first person is harming them. Yeah. And so you get in codependent relationships this terrible cycle of harm upon harm upon harm, and this is why codependent relationships often break up quite rapidly unless the codependency is well established yeah. right, from childhood, uh, you know, well established from childhood. Most of the time these codependent relationships eventually get to a stage where there's a build-up of pain, a build-up of pain, and as long as both accept each other's pain, then usually the relationship remains together. Yeah, yeah. But if they don't, then they start fighting and arguing and so forth and then there's a breakup. And the reality is they both caused each other pain. Mm -hmm. While that person gave that person, the other person what they wanted, that person was causing them pain. Yeah. Right? The question is what does the person need from God's perspective? Mm -hmm. They need to be loved, cared for, told the truth to, there's a whole heap of things from God's perspective they needed. Mm. And if you give them that, then it doesn't matter what they think about that, you've not caused them any pain, yeah. whether they believe you've caused them pain or not. Yeah. yeah. And so you don't have any responsibility for what they, the claim they the claim. pain, the pain they claim that Is they your feel. Fault. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they have no responsibility for that. Yeah. So when I tell someone the truth and they tell me that I caused them pain, I go, oh, I have not. Mm -hmm. I can't take any responsibility for that, and I know for certain God doesn't attribute any responsibility towards me because in telling you the truth, I've given you a gift of love, in yeah. fact. Yeah. And the fact that you don't want to receive it is one of your addictions. That's what's causing you the feeling of pain, mm -hmm. your addiction mm -hmm. to not have the truth. Your addiction to believe the lie is what caused you pain. Yeah. So that's very, very different than me lying to somebody. If I lie to somebody, right, then I've caused them pain. It doesn't matter whether I did it for the right reason or not, you know. It doesn't matter what reason I did it for. I've caused them pain. Yeah. So I'm responsible for the pain they feel. So it's like, it's like a man who's in a relationship with a woman and he cheats on the woman and he doesn't tell her, right? He's caused her pain. Yeah. He's telling himself, he's telling himself, I won't tell her, so I'm going to prevent her pain. But he's caused her pain. He's broken the relationship. Sooner or later she'll find out whether it's here on earth or in the spirit world. She's going to find out. She's going to feel hurt from it. And he has broken the love bond by cheating sexually on her. Yeah. That's a, a, a creation of pain. Mm -hmm. right? And so, so of course he's caused her pain. Whether he's acknowledged it or not, he's caused her pain. And, it, and, and telling her makes her pain better, mm -hmm. not worse. Because mm -hmm. it gives her the choice to do something about it. <laughs> it, yep. it. It gives her the choice to decide what she's going to do with this man. Is she going to throw him away? <laughs> or is she going to work through the issue with him? Or, is, you know, what, is she going to forgive him? Or what's she going to do? She's got the choice now. Yep. So now he's lessened her pain even though she feels pain. Yep. Even though she feels pain, he's been honest. 
So that's, that's a better place to be from God's perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So her response to the honesty, right, yeah. she, she shouldn't be saying to him, I didn't want to know, because that, that's, that's, that, that's, that's her now causing him pain. Yeah. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, it does. She would say, I want to know, right, but I now need to decide what I'm going to do mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. with this relationship. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And this is where we often get confused with pain. Pain is often distorted by other people. They think we've caused pain when we haven't. They think we haven't caused pain when we have. And what the real judge of it is God's laws and God's principles of love. Mm -hmm. So God is the judge about all these issues of pain. God is the only person who really knows whether you have caused somebody else pain or whether they have caused you pain. And a person who's become at one with God, of course, also knows. Very good. Thank you.